What about now? It's time to rock with the bigger the back. Bam bum. What about now? It's time to rock with the bigger the back. Bam bum. Bum to the bum to the bum to the bass. Bum to the bum to the bum bum. Bum to the bum to the bum to the bass. Bum to the bum to the bum bum. Bum to the bum to the bum to the bass. Bum to the bum to the bum bum. Bum to the bum to the bum to the bass. Bum to the bum to the bum bum. Bum to the boot to the boot to the boot boot. Bum to the bass to the bass bass bass. Bum to the boot to the boot to the boot boot. Bum to the bass to the bass bass bass. Welcome to the first ever episode of the 411 folks. I am here with Jake. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Jake, you are a veteran of podcasts. You've got your own podcast. Tell us a little bit, bit about that. Yeah, I'm about four episodes into my own podca- podcast. It's called The Grind. Uh, I do it with my friend Zach. Um, it's kind of the similar formula of this podcast. So if, if you like what you hear here, head over to iTunes too and um, check out The Grind. And uh, so for those of you who aren't avid fans of The Grind, Jake, just give us a little intro who you are. Um, well, I'm Jake. I'm your younger brother, youngest brother, and um, I've been doing radio broadcasting and kind of communication and journalism for four or five years now. So I'm a little bit experienced in the field and um, yeah, I just want to... Um, Give, ga- give gaming a go. I've done music pretty much my whole life, so I thought I'd try something, that, try, try something different uh, in pretty much 2016, yeah. Yeah, I guess the reason I wanted to start a podcast as well is just to have an actual outlet where I can actually speak about games. We speak about games all the time and, you know, why not just record it? Yeah, that's kind of the way I felt starting my own podcast too because like, pretty much you, you and a few other people are really the only people I speak to about games. And um, I just kind yeah, I just kind of wanted to get out there and hopefully interact with a few other people too through the podcast, um, through emails and stuff. So it's been pretty fun, and hopefully this one will take off in a similar way. Well, this podcast has a different sort of spin to it. Uh, we focus a lot here on nostalgic moments from our past, and because we grew up together, we've had a lot of those moments together. Um, so a question I wanted to ask you. I don't think I've asked you this before. What's do you remember the first game you ever played? Um I'm not sure if it's the first first ever game I played. But I suppose the the biggest memory of the first gaming experience I had was uh Super Nintendo and uh Mario Brothers 3, I think it was. Mm. Um I just remember I just remember that kind of being the first you know, I can't really re- remember. People, A lot of people can remember when they're like two, three years old, but I don't. So I don't remember what age I was, but uh, I just remember that game being a standout of uh, what we played, of what I played, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you were part of that era of Super Nintendo because you're, what, four years younger than me, four or five years younger than me? Yeah. I clearly remember the days of the Super Nintendo days or NES for you Americans. Y- yeah, um... I think when I started playing it, um, I think we still had the 64 in the house as well. I think for a time there, we had yeah. we had them both. And um, I, I always used to... My best memory is I always used to wake up really early when I was a kid. Really early, before anyone else in the house. Go out to the TV in the lounge room and switch it on myself uh, without waking anyone else up. Mm. And I always remember, yeah, Super Mario Land. Uh, Super Mario Land, was that it? Or Super Mario World. Super, yeah, Super Mario World, yep. And uh, Mario Bros. 3, so, yeah. And I think we had we had the original, didn't we? Super Mario Bros. I'd like to say we did, yeah. Yeah. Because we got that Super Nintendo from our neighbours. Our neighbours were sort of late teens, they were growing up, they knew we were young, living next door, so they sort of handed the Nintendo over to us. Uh, they invited me over... Um, to sort of see how it was first. Mm. That's where the, that's the first game I ever played. The first game I ever played was Street Fighter mm. on the Super Nintendo. And um, so that was planted over there. I liked it. So, yeah, they gave us the Super Nintendo. And with that, I think they gave us Super Mario Bros, Mario Kart, and Donkey Kong Country. Mm. Yes. Do you remember playing those? I do. Yeah. Yeah, Mario Kart as well. Um, one thing I can say is... Um, I know majority of people you talk to say they've grown up with Nintendo. Uh, it's either pretty much Nintendo or Sega. Yeah. One thing I can say is I'm so glad I'm a Nintendo kid, not a Sega kid. Yep. Because <laughs> Sega kids are weird. Good yeah. memories with the Nintendo. Yeah. Lots yep. of fun. Because we 
we started off with Super Nintendo. We went we went and had the Nintendo 64. We then got an Xbox, the original Xbox. Yep. And then we took different pathways. You ended up getting an Xbox 360. I got a PlayStation 3. Because that was sort of the times when we both sort of had our own TVs in our own rooms. Yeah, so make so, our own money as well. Yeah. Actually, before even before we went our own separate ways, one of our other brothers got the Nintendo GameCube. Yeah, And that's bought right. that as... He he wanted it to be like like the old sixty four days, but by that time we were kind of doing it, started to doing our own thing. Yep. We we're all growing up. It just and wasn't it, the same. It wasn't the same. No. no. So we tried to make it that four player experience like mm. we always did, but it just didn't work out. I have no memories with the GameCube. I never played it yeah. when we had it. That's just because we were doing our own things at that point. Yeah. So all all my memories sort of that we've shared together is with Super Nintendo and sixty four and the original original Xbox. Yeah. Um. So I guess. Uh, I'll let you know sort of the structure of our show that we're going to be doing every week. It's going to be the same thing every week. We'll start off um, sharing a bit of news that we've we've found interesting over the week. It's not heavily based on news. It's only things that we've found interesting um, over the week. Uh, and then we'll head straight into a game that I like to call Would You Rather? And uh, this game is literally just asking Would You Rather questions. One week I'll ask Jake some questions. The next week... Um, Jake will ask me questions, um, and then we'll head over to the topic of the shows. Um, so I'll bring a topic, Jake will bring a topic, we'll both discuss those topics, um, and these topics are literally anything you want to talk about, anything gaming related you want to talk about, bring it to the show, and that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so let's get straight into the news. Did you bring anything uh, sort of news related that you want to share today? Um, we both bought the same topic. But uh, I'm going to bring something kind of different. Okay, that, you do that. Um, you leave that one for me then. Okay. Then for all. Um, one thing I'm, I'm pretty excited to see actually kind of reemerge uh, is the the discussion of um, the Bioshock collection for these new generation consoles. Oh, okay, yeah. Because last year it was listed on a on a foreign re- retailer. Yeah. Uh, and then taken down pretty quickly. But recently it was least, uh, listed on a I think a Brazilian rating submission board or something. Something like that. And okay. it's, been, it's been picked up by the internet. Saying, Is that the only thing that sort of they've said about it? Yeah. it's Nothing's been announced. Nothing's, you know, the developers haven't said anything about it. This is the only, this is the only sort of thing pointing that it exists. Okay. And most of the time when these listings and stuff come out, it's more than likely true. Because why else would they be showing up? Right. Is yeah. this something that you'd get? Absolutely. I want and, you, and you'd want it to be remastered with, you know, better graphics and everything? I don't, I'm not sure if it would... I think they would uh, treat it the same way they did with the Uncharted collection. Just kind of bumped up yeah. in resolution. Yeah. But, you know... I mean, because like a game like Bioshock Infinite, it wasn't released that, that long ago, so it doesn't really need a huge graphical increase. No. But, I mean, it, it would definitely pay to have it on these newer consoles. Especially Bio, the first Bioshock. That, um... I mean, it, it's, it's kind of a pretty... Uh, older game by today's standards so having that graphical push up Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll treat it pretty well yeah I'm all for games getting re-released remastered onto the new consoles because I mean you know last gen I had a PS3 I'm never going to play that again Mm -hmm. I've got my Xbox One I really want to play all the Mass Effect games again but I'm not going to play them on PS3 I hope they get re-released sort yeah. of as in the same sort of style as Uncharted so I can play them on the Xbox One. Yeah. I know I know for at least Mass Effect's point of view, uh, I keep reading things that EA um, aren't interested in re-releases or repackaging of, really? of games. So since Mass Effect is under EA's umbrella, I don't think we'll be seeing that, which is unfortunate because that's really... Because I, I was hoping for a, sort of a Dragon Age co- collection as well, Dragon Age 1 and 2 yeah. re-released. Yeah, that'd be good. Considering, considering, uh, in uh, Mass Effect's terms, they've got a game coming up, a new game. Yeah, yeah. Possibly at the end of this year, so it would be good to package all the old games together. Mm. But um, in saying that, if Mass Effect Four is coming out at the end of this year, if they are planning to release Mass Effect One, Two, and Three in a bundle at the start of this year, maybe that's a bit much all in one year. I mean, I mean, you know, if if the bundle came out for all three Mass Effect games. You get it, you play through all three. Mass Effect 4 comes out by the time you're just finishing up. Are you really, you know, into it anymore? Is it too much Mass Effect for one year? Sure. I mean, there are big games, but look at Uncharted. 
Exactly. Oh, yeah, Uncharted true. came out at the end yeah. of last year, and they've got a new Uncharted this year. So, I mean, uh, Mass Effect are bigger games, for sure, but mm. um, people, I don't know, people really eat them up. So, to, um, what was I talking about? Bioshock. Yeah. I haven't played the first two Bioshock games in a very long time. I finished Bioshock Infinite uh, about six months ago or so, and I love that. So, I really love the series, and it'll be really good if I could um, have them all, all together in the one, one package, and he's hoping. Well, you know I've never played Bioshock Infinite. You know that very well, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I tell the story? <laughs> yes, actually, you can. Yeah, so uh, for Christmas around our place, we, we do Secret Santa because there are a lot of us. And um, I've picked Scott probably three years in a row now. Yep. <laughs> three or four years. I always pick him. And, um, you know, I know I know what to buy, Scott, just video games. So one year I got him Bioshock Infinite and something else, I think. I think it was, uh, it was Dragon Ball Z... Um, Raging Blast, the original Raging Blast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I and played that. Of course you did. <laughs> and um, you never touched Bioshock Infinite, not no, once. Never. No. Didn't even put it in the PlayStation. Um, I so, had I had recently finished Bioshock and Bioshock Two though, so I was kind of. That's what know. that's what I thought would be good yeah. to, and then and then you traded in so um, yeah yeah Soul traded destroyed. it in yeah I needed some money to get some other games. <laughs> So, yeah, and I actually got you Secret Santa like um, the year before. And yep. have you even played Yokai Watch yet? I've turned it on. Oh god, I've played a bit of it. There's just a lot. Of, there's a lot on my list that I have to get through. Yeah, right before on. I get to it. But, okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move <laughs> on. Um, the news topic that I've brought um, something that I, it literally just came up today when I was um, going through my emails is that there will be a Pokemon Direct on Saturday morning, bright and early, 2 a.m. here mm-hmm. in Australia, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, first off, are you staying up for it? I, um, I have to get up for work early in the morning, but I'll uh, sleep and get back up for it. Yeah, I think I'll stay up for it. It's the end of my work week, so I might have a few coffees, stay up. And the thing, before we get into what what actually is going to be in the direct... You were saying that you think it's going to be five minutes. It is five minutes long. Okay, but I'd read nothing about it being five minutes. And when has there been a direct that's been five minutes long? Probably never. So, who are you hearing this from? Um, the guy who runs uh, Cerebi.net. You know, that really... Yeah. Uh, I follow him on Twitter. And I... So, how does he know? You know, he, he's in the Pokemon business. He, he breaks stories and... So, he's pretty serious that it's five minutes. Yep. Yep. Because I'm not sure it's worth staying up for five minutes. If it's like a forty half an hour to forty minute thing, sure I'll stay up. But five minutes, I'm going to bed. Okay, that's a good five minutes to announce a new Pokemon series, the the new Pokemon game or whatever. That's plenty enough time. I can announce it here and elaborate later at E3 or whatever. Because okay. because the reason the Pokemon Direct is happening at that time, that's exactly when uh, Pokemon Day commences in Japan. Um. Pokemon, as in the 30th anniversary on yeah, that exact 20th. day. 20th. Yeah. You've said 30th in, your, in the grind as well. You keep saying 30th. Isn't it? Th- no, it's the 20th. Oh. <laughs> How old's Mario? That's... That's 25, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. God. But Pokemon is 20. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, whatever. Um, so, you think that... Uh, the new Pokemon game is getting released, Pokemon Z. Yeah, I had I had my doubts actually. I've been talking about this on the grind as well. I didn't. Um, there's a there's a lot of Pokemon this year. There's been a lot. Yeah. So already they've had a few spin off titles come out: Super Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Shuffle, Pokemon Pico- Picross, and still more to come. Still more to come. You Detective know, Pikachu, Detective Pikachu, Pokemon Tournament, Pokemon uh, Go. Yep. A lot of Pokemon is happening. So to have a main series Pokemon game come out. I think that's... To top it all off. Yeah, I, I thought that would be overkill. Mm. And maybe they're just announcing it for next year. But thinking about it, seeing as though it's the big... They're going all out for the 20th anniversary. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely going all out with the cards, the movies, yeah. the anime as well. Uh, I kind of see I kind of see the benefit of it now, actually. Well, the last main series Pokemon game was released in 2014. Literally, the entire 2015 was just full of speculation of will we see a Pokemon Z or will it go straight to Gen 7. Um, I I think there will be a Pokemon Z, um, Pokemon Z or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, I, but the, I was also thinking um, 
a while ago when I was speculating whether we'll see it or not, that I thought that maybe this game had been delayed because w- the, the, the anime follows the game series. Yeah. And right now the anime is ahead of the game series because X, Y, and Z is there. It's like 15 episodes through it. Yeah, that's, that, never, that's it's, never happened. It's never it? happened. Yeah. The game has always come out before the next Pokemon series. So I was thinking, oh, maybe it's delayed. And the only reason I could think of a delay for a Pokemon game, which I don't think has ever happened either, mm. they're usually onto it. The only reason I can think of a delay is for because they're doing something pretty new with it. Yeah, I think they've got something in there that it's never been done or seen in a Pokemon game that they're sort of maybe having trouble with. They need a bit of extra time. Yeah. With. Well, I mean, they kind of changed things up with X and Y as well. Uh, yeah. Being the first full 3D. Yeah. The 3D models and all yep. that. So and, if they're um, and um, added a few more mechanics in the um, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby games with the sneaking and everything. Yep. Um. I I reckon they've just got something big planned for it yeah i think there's a big thing in there sort of maybe a huge new game mechanic in there that changes the series or i mean how how much better can the graphics or 3d get no you're still on the same console yeah the i think that's as good as the graphics can get at least the 3ds can get um but in terms of new game mechanics i mean me personally i wasn't a big fan of uh, the X and Y series, I thought. Yeah. I thought it was such a, a real big pull away from. It was a bit to get used to. Yeah, and then the only reason I kind of liked uh, Omega Ruby was that that's my favorite generation, so I just put up with it pretty much. Yeah. But um, so if they're gonna really shake things up, um, I don't know. I, I don't really want to speculate, but it'll be just interesting to see what what comes out of it. I I really can't. I really can't think of. What they could, what else they could do for a, for a handheld device in that series? Yeah. Well, whatever it is, I do hope that if it is Pokemon Z, um, I hope it is getting released on the 3DS, just because I want the whole generation on the 3DS on the same console. Yeah. If they re- announce it for NX or whatever, that's I don't I don't want that. No. Um, but it's actually interesting. This is a, in traditional Pokemon style that they usually do. For example. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Mm-hmm. There's always, like, an Emerald usually comes, like, maybe a year later yeah. or something. And it's always, like, it's always kind of the, the definitive edition of that generation. And so we never really had that for X and Y. People, that's why all the speculation and, and rumours have been coming, mm. because people have been expecting the third one. Yeah. And so if they're kind of... it will be interesting if, if they just kind of do what Emerald did and kind of have the, the same game there, maybe change up the story a bit, but... Um, have the same mechanics and same outline of X and Y, I think a lot of people will actually be disappointed in that because the build-up to it has been pretty extreme. Mm-hmm. And so if they kind of let everyone down, just make it pretty much the same as X and Y. But, um, oh yeah, I don't know. I think they have to do something different then. I think it'll be called X, Y, and Z. That's what mm-hmm. the anime is called. Okay. And um, because everyone was thinking, um, you know, when Black and White came out, Everyone said, "Oh, we're waiting for Pokemon Grey." Mm. That's what everyone said. But no, they changed it black, white, black two, two. white two. Yeah, everyone's saying this is going to be Pokemon Z. I reckon it's Pokemon X, Y, and Z. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Um, let's move on. Mm-hmm. So, our new segment. Well, you know, it is a new segment because it's the first show. This is the Would You Rather game. I've brought five Would You, would you Rather questions that which I'm going to ask you. You have no idea what these questions are, so this no. is sort of on the spot. Um, you've got to answer on the spot. Next week, you'll bring me five questions. That's okay. how it works, okay? All right. All right, so these five questions, I've tried to get these questions sort of thing on things based around what you're interested in so you can actually answer it properly, and the five questions are all Nintendo-based. Oh, okay. So there you go. Actually, maybe the first one uh, is debatable. We'll, we'll see. The first question, ready? Yeah. Would you rather a new Banjo-Kazooie game or a new Grabbed by the Ghoulies game? Ah, that's a good question. And this one's debatable because this is like an Xbox question, really. Yeah. Um, wow. I, w- I would say... Um, gra- I, I know you love Grabbed by the Ghoulies. I do. And me out of like five other people in the world like Grabbed by the Ghoulies. I, I would like a new Grabbed by the Ghoulies game. Only because Ukulele is coming. And yeah, that, true, and that's yeah. pretty much a banjo because okay. of the game. 
Uh, if ukulele wasn't coming, I would 100% say Banjo Kazooie. Yep. Yeah, um, ukulele scratches that itch. Yeah. For a new, yeah. Yeah, and Grand Party Blues, I found it to be a really good, uh, really interesting take on, I suppose, I, I don't know, just, it wasn't a platformer, it was it was kind of like an action-adventure kind of game. Uh, I just found it really interesting, and not many people grabbed onto it. So, I don't know. I mean, even, because it's just been released on Rare Replay, mm. I, I still don't hear people talk about that one. No, everyone just gravitates towards Banjo, because yeah. don't they? It's a shame, because uh, I, I, I do see it as one of Rare's um, best games. Just the... It, it was so... Rare as the company, you know, they were so quirky and so different to everyone else. And Grab Body Ghoulies was... Pretty much encapsulates what Rare is really about. That was a that was a full full game, wasn't it? That wasn't just sort of like a kind of indie thing, not indie, no. but like a short game. No, it was, it was full on game. Full, it? Yeah. yeah, I... I'd... It was like as long as the Banjo, you know. Yep. Yeah. I never finished it because the, the later half of the game got really difficult. Um, so I never ended up finishing it. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Just the whole aesthetic of the game too was um, kind of played on this kind of spooky Scooby-Doo kind of vibe. Yeah. T- 2005, was it? It was definitely around then, yeah. And I remember... Was it after Nuts and Bolts? No, way before. Nuts and Bolts was a 360 game. Oh, yeah. Grabbed by the Ghoulies. We played that on the original Xbox, hey? Yeah. yeah. I remember we had a demo disc... Of it first, yeah. Play the hell out yep. of that because when we got that, we always thought we somehow knew it was going to be. It was by the people who made Ben Shikazui. We must have recognized. Yeah, we must have yeah. recognized the art style. Yeah. or or whatever. But um, and we always between us, we always hyped it to be the next Ben Shikazui. And mm. in my mind, it, it lived up to that. But I don't think anyone else gravitated toward it. I, I never played it. I don't think I watched you play it all the time, but I never played it. So. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Um, this sort of relates to our discussion earlier about Pokemon, mm-hmm. but would you rather a new gen Pokemon game, so Gen Seven, or Pokemon Z to come out? Uh, so for the Nintendo Direct, what what do you want them to announce? Yeah. Um, gosh, I don't know. Because well, I mean, we still don't know what Pokemon Z is. It it could may it could be Generation Seven. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather Z. Um, I don't think they're finished with that generation yet. Yeah. Looking back on the Pokedex mm. on um, Omega Ruby, there weren't new many new Pokemon at all. They hardly added any mm. new Pokemon. Like it was the it was the least amount of new Pokemon they added in any generation. So I I, I, um, I don't think they're done with it, and I don't think I'm yeah. done with it. I'm, I think they need Pokemon Z to conclude Gen Six, and. Um, Obviously, they've been working on something big because we haven't seen it for, you know, well, when they announce it, you know, it could be at the end of this year, so it'll be two years. Mm. So, I think they're working on something big for it. Yeah. Um, okay. You'll like this question. <laughs> okay. This is a threefer. Would you rather Mario Galaxy 3, mm. Mario Sunshine 2, or something brand new? Uh, something brand new. Yeah. Absolutely. Not a sequel. No, um, I think they're finished with the galaxy kind of thing. They squeeze all... Uh, no, they can do more, but... Um, I wouldn't want to see them do more. Like, but, but... No, they... Yeah, to be honest, they squeezed all they could out of that. Mario Galaxy 2 was pretty much... Uh, was pretty much a carbon copy. Yeah, can you... Because in my mind, I can't see the difference between Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2 when I think back of those games. Mm. I never I never played Galaxy 2, but I've mm. seen you play it. But, like, I can't sort of distinguish the difference between the two games whenever I think about moments from both of them. No, they were... It was a sequel uh, as, as as true to the word sequel is, you know. Yeah. It was, it was definitely the number two. So no, it didn't take sort of any new risks with it? Just sort of the same gameplay no, yeah, kind of thing? No, same resources yeah. from the same game. Um, same engines. Same. Yeah, and for some reason that game got number two got rated critically higher than number one did. Um, I, I do remember that being rated high, which uh, I disagree with. But I do love the Galaxy uh, series. Um, you recently went through Galaxy 1. I did. I yeah. watched you. Yeah, that took me... It was a few months ago. Yeah, that took me a weekend to get through. Yeah, you just smashed through it. Yeah. That's another one of those games where um, I, I've replayed quite a few times not the, yeah again not the same with Galaxy 2 I don't know that one mm. just didn't grab me maybe yeah. because they came out in pretty quick succession to each other 
maybe just a year apart. Which one's which one's harder? Are they both the same? Mm, number, number two is definitely harder. Okay. Because um, those games can get pretty difficult. Yes. But um, I like to see something new. Something new. Actually, I think you and I were talking about this quite a while ago. Um, I think I think a good thing to them... I mean, it's difficult to tell where they can go. They've been to the galaxy. They've yeah. literally hit their limit of, of ideas, pretty much. It would be cool if they just brought it back down to the grace base level, you know? That's exact do, yeah. Do Peach's Castle, do the Mushroom Kingdom, but um in like kind of a re restructure and still have all the same old elements in there from sixty four. But I don't know, you can I think I think it'd be really nice to bring it back down. That's literally what I was gonna suggest as well. Bring it bring it down, go back to Peach's Castle, but like because Super Mario sixty four was just literally Peach's Castle and yeah. the outdoor yard. Bring it back to that castle, take us back there in the yard, and, you know, extend the map further. Have have an extra bit, but mm. give us that castle again. It just but keep it more simple. Yeah. You're not in the galaxy or anything. You just keep it simple, but, you know. Yeah, actually, I remember reading something saying, like, the whole Mushroom Kingdom of how it's interconnected between the Mario Party lands and the Mario Golf. Like, this, this pretty much all takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. And um, they've, they've built some really neat ideas out of this one land. Why not the next 3D Mario platformer game be in the Mushroom Kingdom? Open world Mushroom Kingdom. Pretty much, yeah. What more could you want? Yeah. So, who knows? I mean, how, how long since it's been... How, how long has it been since Galaxy 2? Uh, Galaxy 2, 2011 or 12? I thought it was 10 or 11, yeah. So it's been a while. It's been some time, yeah. And do you think they've been working on something since? No, uh, no, the same team who does, the same Galaxy team worked on 3D World. Oh, okay. 3D Land 3D, and 3D World. Yeah. Um, so even, e even if they haven't been working, literally like working on it since, they they must have been in talks yeah. since. I, I, they must be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I do think, even though Wii U never got a proper 3D... Mario platform, and you don't think that's going to happen? No, no, no. they're, they're going to save that for NX. Yeah, they'll now. wait. Yeah, they've got to, they've got to get things right for the NX. Yes, the smart thing to do would be launch title. Yeah, I, I do think NX is a whole different topic in in itself, but yeah. I do think they've got something massive for NX. Like I do yeah. think the new Zelda is a launch title. Yeah, um, they'll, but, they'll but as well as releasing it on Wii U, but it's a absolutely port. port to yeah, NX, I'll put, yeah, I'll put money on that. But yeah. yeah, they've got something big. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. We will. Um, okay, last question. Oh, no. no Two more questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, this one... Okay, I'll just ask. Mario, would you rather Mario Party 11... Mm. It is up to Mario Party 11, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Or a Mario Party 1, 2, and 3 collection. HD collection. Um, yeah, I'd say the... I'd say the collection. Yeah, that's what I'd rather. Yeah. Just because um, Mario Party has just been going dead. Yeah, down it's, down. it's been getting weird. Uh, if they just... If they can just listen to what fans want of that series... Mm. Like we've been saying, like we just said with the 3D platform of Mario, bring it back down to its roots. Yeah. No one likes to play in the way that it's going now. Everybody talk about how great 1, 2, and 3 were. Yeah. Take us back to that board game yeah. even, style. Even 4, 5, and 6 were highly regarded as well. Yeah. The GameCube yeah. ones. Until it hit its Wii generation, it's just going. It's been going downhill, and I don't see why not. Just, I was so disappointed when um, Mario Party Island Tour came out on the 3DS. That was that's the only Mario Party game I actually own, mm. and it's just not the same. You can't do sort of the three-hour board game match yeah. to get the stars and get them at the end. All the, the the longest game you can do is like 40 minutes. I literally wanted to sit there for three hours and play the uh, you know proper board game match you know yeah. get really into it, but you can't. It's, it's literally just racing to the finish and yeah, yeah. It's it's not the same and yeah. I really hope they if if there is Mario Party Eleven, take us back to that thing that we want yeah. that we've been asking for. Last question: Would you rather NX released at the end of this year or for it to come out in two thousand seventeen? Two thousand seventeen. You want um, this year to be about Wii U? Um, yeah, I mean, Wii U still has a few games coming out. Not enough. Not enough games. Mm. But um, I think the turnaround would be too quick. Yeah. Uh, if it were this year. Um, 
Only because... Only because they're... They're not winding the Wii U down in the way the Wii was winding down for mm-hmm. Wii U. You know what I mean? There's still some big first-party games coming out. Pokemon Tournament. There's that Fire Emblem Cross Shin Megami yeah. Tensei game or yeah. whatever. There's still there's still hopes of a new Zelda. There is a new Zelda. Yeah. They keep reaffirming got, that it's got a Wii Star U. Fox coming out. Star Fox. Pikmin Four was announced, but we don't know whether that's for NX. I yeah. Mean, that could be a launch for NX. Yeah. So um, even the same with 3DS because we still don't know what the NX is going to be. No. Um, even the same with the 3DS, like. They're not winding down with that at all. There's some mammoth games coming up for 3DS now, this year, so... I don't know. I'd like to have one more solid year with my Wii U. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, there was one something I, w- I did want to bring up. Um, in the history of Nintendo's console release, I don't know if, if it's done for a reason... But I've noticed the timeline of their console release. Super Nintendo was released in 1992. Yep. Four years later, Nintendo 64 in 96. Yep. Six years later, GameCube in 2002. Four years later, Wii in 2006. Six years later, Wii U in 2012. So it's a 4-6-4-6 four, six, four, six pattern. The next one would be four years, which means 2016. Well, yeah, you, you were saying that 64 had a six-year gap between that and the GameCube, right? Yeah. Uh, what's that? Well, 64, between game... six years. Yeah, six game. years, yeah. I mean, 64 was... They keep saying that it was a kind of a commercial failure, but in, in the eyes of the public, it was it was a big deal. Yeah. Whereas the GameCube was even more of a bigger failure. And then the Wii was the biggest thing for them, pretty much. Mm. So to have, to ride that for six years would be smart. I think I think if you look at just to get off topic for just five seconds, if you look back how Nintendo sixty four people call it a failure, if you look back at all their games, all, a lot of their good games, they were released around the two thousand mark. Yeah. So they were like four years without the sort of good games, which is exactly where Wii U is up to right now, which is, is the four year mark. Okay. So. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, if GameCube only lasted four years, GameCube uh, to me had some of the best Nintendo games. Or at least... Like? Like. I don't know, Sunshine, but... Twilight, Twilight Princess. Oh, I guess so. Um, Etc. <laughs> <laughs> so, two of them? Uh, Luigi's Mansion. Did you play... No, oh, we didn't have Pikmin. No. That's... Pikmin was the... The first time Pikmin was out was GameCube, wasn't it? That was like a launch, wasn't yep. it? Yeah, that was, that was Pikmin. Uh, Anything else you can think of? Luigi's Mansion? Luigi's Mansion. Anyway... <laughs> Okay. No, but, uh, yeah, I just think they're using the six years because those consoles were a big deal. Yeah. And the four years because the consoles they were writing for those four years weren't. Yeah, true. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think they're going to... Wii U was, is just a mammoth failure. Yeah. Uh, so I think they're going to crush it as quickly as they can. So you've said that you want, you'd rather NX be released next year. What do you actually think is going to happen? Uh... Um, I think I think at the end of this year it's out. Yeah, I'll agree. They can't wait till the end of next year or during next year because it's it's already so far into Xbox One and PS4 consoles yeah. that they just need to get it out. I'll, I'll yeah. agree with that because if they keep saying uh, Zelda New Zelda was 2016, yeah, then I think that's a good bookmark for the NX as well. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Topic of the show. Do you want to? Bring up your topic first. I'll start off with mine. Right. Yeah, so the, the topic I've bought is brought to the show is uh, do you prefer to buy your games digitally or physical copies? Uh, I'll start off. Okay. Um, me, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting more into the digital realm. Uh, more than I would prefer, actually. One, because because a lot of the, uh, more often than not, they have a lot more uh, sales on digital games. Surprisingly... Good sales. For example, uh, I was planning to buy Belly Bravely Second on 3DS. I was just going to go to the store and buy it. But if you got the demo uh, on the digital... On the eShop. On the eShop, you get 10% off uh, on the digital purchase of the full game on the eShop. Yeah. So for that reason, 
I'm buying it digital. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed to see the way it's going, because me, uh, I've got that. I've got that collector mentality in me. Mm, I yeah. like. I know you do too. I like yeah. seeing my games lined up in a shelf. Yeah. I like looking back at the instruction manuals and mm. looking at the artwork, and just having that having. The, it digitally having those titles t- in front of you on the screen is just not the same. Sure, it's got the image there, but it's just it's just definitely not the same. Yeah, the way I the way I see it, um, I'm just lazy these days, and every single time I'm playing my Xbox One, I hate getting up and having to change the disc or put a new disc in. So yeah. I've become so accustomed because I've got most of my games now are downloaded. Yeah. I've become so accustomed to just sitting there turning the game off turn a new game in, don't have to get up and put a disc in. Yeah. That's just... And now that that's happened, I, I want to buy all my games digital digitally now. Yeah, it, it, is, a sh- <laughs> it is a shame. But um, I guess another another thing that's contributed to that is Xbox does the... Microsoft does the um, Games for Gold yeah. every month. Yeah. I've, bu- I've got many free games yeah, from Yeah, that's that. where most of mine are from. And all the discounts. Like yep. uh, a couple of weeks ago, they had all the EA specials. Yep. I bought you know Madden... Uh, Roy McElroy for like half price. So yeah. Why wouldn't I buy it digitally? When, yeah. You know, you go to EB, it's a hundred dollars. Exactly. That's it. So yeah, and, and the one thing I will say about EB Games, which is our version of GameStop, mm-hmm. is that you, you buy a game from there, you have a week to return it if you don't like it, which I've used. And abused. Yeah. Or well, I've used. No, I've only used it a couple of times, but I've, I I'm so glad that. Um, you know, they've, they've had that. Because I, I, I bought Sunset Overdrive, brought mm. it home, played it for two days. I really just didn't like it. I really tried to like it. didn't like it. Yeah. Just, it was, yeah. So I brought it back, got all my money back. It was $100. I also bought um, a 3DS game as well. Um, oh, what's it called? Story of Seasons. Seasons yeah. Um, you were hyped for that as well. I was hyped for it. And then brought it home. There was like a five-hour tutorial. Yeah. And literally, I fell asleep <laughs> while playing this stupid tutorial. It's like bloody... The the first five hours of the game was like reading an instruction manual. Yeah. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I took it back and got my $60 back. Yeah. I, I mean, um, digital uh, digital services have been brought that into Steam. I buy a few games on Steam as well. And they've got a refund policy is that if you play the game for under 10 hours, I think, and had it less than a week... Oh, really? Then you get a full refund from it. See, I would have probably done that with um, RPG Maker. Because... Oh, man, I knew you were... No, 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 I, I, I plan to play that. Like, I'm going to play that. I do want to. But I should have waited until the price went down because I bought it as, pretty much as soon as it went out. This is mm. the new one, RPG Maker VX. I think that's the new one. Yep. And it said it was $80. But because it's... I think that was the American price. Yeah. So, in my bank account, I checked, it took out $120. So, that really? Yeah, ridiculous. And I, I, lucky I didn't get those DLC packs as well because I was going to get them. It would have brought it up to maybe like $200. Yeah. But um, yeah, if I kn- knew about that, I probably would have, um, you know, got my money back yeah. and waited for the price to come down because you see the other RP- RPG makers now, they're like $15. So yeah, I probably should have just got one of them because that's the ones I used to play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th- there, there are different pros and cons to it. But deep down, I, I am disappointed to see um, more and more uh, game shops closing and EB Games kind of... I don't, I don't know if they're failing or... I don't know how it, much... They'll turn into like video stores, uh, video, you know, DVD stores. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and more more and le- less and less I've been buying pre-owned games as well because I used to love pre-owned games. Um, but I just don't see myself buying them as much anymore because the, the prices on them are still pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I I've don't been, think they're that cheap. No, I've been no. I've been trying to find a cheap copy of Metal Gear Solid mm. for ages now. That game was released in September of last year. It yeah. should be around the 50 or something dollar mark now. Yeah. It's still in the 60, 65 dollars. Well, not... sometimes you find a pre-owned price that's more expensive than the actual retail oh, price. Yeah. Because the the retail price is on special or something. And yeah. It's... Yeah. Anyway, you you actually got to look around as well because there's some pre-owned games that I found. Um, say, I was with a friend who we were looking for Don Bradman Cricket pre-owned. There was one copy of it that was about, I think, $50 um, pre-owned. Mm. We found another copy sort of towards the back. It was like $35 pre-owned. Just the condition of the game, was it? 
Oh, I suppose so. Yeah. But they looked the same, so I'm not sure. I mean, they'd, they'd both be working. Yeah. They, they wouldn't put it out there if it didn't work. So. I mean, they just, at the time, at the time of that $50 when the game was newer, and they just forgot about the other copy that it had or yeah. something. Who knows? Well, anyway, so what do you prefer? Like, do you, do you prefer digital to physical now? Like, nowadays? I mean, you've, you've got all your sort of 360 collection, all your bloody... I don't know, other collections now. Yeah. Are you ready to just go digital now for the new generation consoles? Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, I suppose I am. Uh, I, I agree with that you're more and often than not, I, I do my, find myself annoyed to having the taking the disc out. <laughs> First world problems. Yeah. Or, uh, something to add to that is that every time I bought my Xbox with Halo 5 pre-installed on it. Yeah. And, um, Every time I try and pick that game back up, which is maybe once every month or so, mm-hmm. it has to down like a two gigabyte update. Ah, uh, yeah. So I, I'm I'm keen to play Halo. I launch it, not update, and that that doesn't have to do with buying it either digital. Yeah, because that's the same thing. Same thing, yeah. but that that's just the way these these games are headed. Now. Yeah. So to pick up a game and it needs a two gigabyte update, it just pulls me straight out yeah. of it. If you've got like. I don't know, you need to go to bed at like 9 o'clock for work the next day. You've got It's 8 o'clock, you've got an hour to play a game. You put it in and it's got an update. You're not playing it that night, yeah. literally. Yeah. I'll add to that again, that n- Nintendo games never need updates. And if they do, hardly ever, and they're, they're quick yeah. updates too. Well, I haven't, I haven't owned a Nintendo console since Nintendo 64, but I've got a 3DS and yeah... They, they definitely don't need updates. I've never had to go through an update. Smash Bros. once, but yeah, literally. Pokemon, Pokemon gets a few updates as well. Do they? Yeah. You, you need to connect it to the inset more often. Because before you launch the game, it, oh, it'll yeah, come up. Yeah. It's like, it's not, it's optional. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for example, Xenoblade Chronicles X, this huge, huge RPG uh, for the Wii U, um, hasn't had it needed, I think only needed one patch in its lifespan so far. It's been out since November. Mm. And you compare that to like Fallout 4, which has needed several patches and updates. You know? I think that's just Nintendo doing the quality control better than these other companies. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, before we head into my topic, because my to- topic's actually pretty big, um, we're going to take a little break and we'll be back. This week is your top five most anticipated games of 2016. Yep. Um, I've written mine down. Did you just look at my list? No, I haven't okay, seen it. Okay, good. Because it's going to be a surprise. Okay. Okay. But um, I don't have any particular order for mine. I do have one, my most anticipated game, so I will save that for last. But the other four, I'll just um, list off. Yep. Um, so, have you written yours down? I've got, um, yeah, I've got some listed. But uh, I've got some in in my noggin up here too. Well, do you want to go first since they're just sitting up there and they're not down on paper? Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, they're here. Anyway, um, the the first one is actually coming out in uh, I think pretty much a week's time. It's actually uh, Zelda Twilight Princess HD, uh, which you've already bought. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had it's it. on pre-order. It's on yeah. pre-order because I want the amiibo and the soundtrack with it. Is yeah. that why you pre-ordered it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because, you know, sometimes they Amiibo sell out, and the only way to get the Amiibo is in the package. Really? Yeah. This time, anyway. Anyway, um, so you may or may not know, but I I love Twilight Princess. It's my favourite Zelda game. Played it many, many times back on the GameCube days, uh, and then I played it again on the Wii uh, when I had the chance to play it there as well, because it was on both systems. But, um, yeah, more each and each day, uh, more information has been coming out about Twilight Princess, uh, new additions, 
had a had a kind of like a shaving off the the sort of parts that make the game that made the game a bit monotonous in, in ways. Like the first kind of two hours of the game is a big tutorial that's kind of um that's kind of a bit boring. So I've I've heard rumors that they've kind of shaved that down a bit. Anyway, they're just kind of streamlining the game a bit more it seems. And the graphics have been bumped up uh, a fair amount too. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. Okay. Not gonna be one <clears throat> not gonna be one of those games where you um put it in and remember sort of it's not as great as you thought it was. Uh, no, I, no, definitely not. I, uh, I've had high, such high. Oh, maybe no, no, no. This game is. I, I only played it, maybe, four years ago now, so it's not that long. Yeah. Uh, it. I just definitely think it'll still hold up. Okay. Next game. Next game. Are uh, you saving your best one for last, or, or is it just you got no order? No, I got no order. Right. Really. Uh, I want to talk about South Park, the new South Park game, the yeah. Fractured Butthole. Uh, that's that last South Park game was. Actually, a real surprise from two years ago, maybe? Yeah. Or even uh, 2015. Yeah, I think it was last year. Yeah. Um, it was a real surprise. It's probably one of the, the funniest games I've ever played. And getting humor in a game is is pretty difficult. Another yeah. really funny game I found was Borderlands, the pre-sequel. They're actually games I've really like laughed out loud, properly. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult thing to do. So I thought um, South Park, they did it really well. It was a real... They knew their source material very well because it was... I mean, it was done by the show's creators. So they knew what they were doing. And um, they pretty much stated that they weren't ever going to do another game again because it was so time-consuming. And they were doing the show simultaneously as well. Uh, but it came out... This was announced at E3 just last year. And they just wanted to get a few things right they, they, they thought they didn't do as well as they thought of they should have. And um, I, I kind of prefer the setting of this game the way it looks like, whereas the Stick of Truth was based on their kind of, uh, their Lord of the Rings take, their Game of, uh, game of Thrones take, you know, all the medieval characters that they yeah. made in South Park. This time they're doing their superheroes that, they, oh, okay. that they've created in the show, which I, I prefer that take uh, much better. So it'll be interesting to see how they... Um, pull that off hopefully this year they haven't announced any other details other than that E3 trailer so they've been a bit scarce on things so hopefully did they, they say it was for this year it, you know TBC 2016 so oh, okay. right. nothing permanent so um, I do hope it's it's out before the end of the year uh, another game this is an Xbox One exclusive but it's called Cuphead I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you've heard yep. of this yep. yeah I'm excited for it because it just looks amazing the only thing I've seen from it was that trailer that they showed at E3 yeah and uh, I've heard it's pretty. I've heard it's a pretty difficult game because it's based around boss battles. Um, it's kind of like a shoot 'em up kind of, and a twitch, like it's side scrolling. It's two D, and it's got this. It's got this art style like a nineteen forties cartoon or something. It's got that film grain yeah. over it. Everything's kind of chibi and um, big wide eyed Looney Tunes characters or something. I don't know. It looks really cool. Uh, I, I think it'll look really good on yeah. sort of a HD screen. You know? Yeah, and I hope the gameplay holds up with the look yeah. of it too. Because I think everyone's just swept away in the aesthetic of the game. Um, so I hope it plays as well as it looks, you know. Uh, another game I want to talk about is Star Fox Zero. Um, that should have been out by now. We should have had it by now. But it's unfortunately been delayed until April of this year. Um, yeah, pretty much a lot of negative press that's been going around this game, unfortunately. I've loved everything I've seen around it. Even that first, the first thing Nintendo showed at their direct at E3, you know, they came up in the Muppets kind of style mm. of Star Fox characters. I was, um, uh, that sold me straight away. Uh, I loved it from the minute I seen it. You've, you've stayed positive throughout this whole sort of negative reaction around Star Fox. No matter what you're in. If the game comes out, it gets bloody twos and threes. You're still getting it. Of course. Of course. Star Fox is... A beloved uh, Nintendo franchise. I can't turn my back on it now. Um, you know, Star Fox 64 is still one of the best. And really, the last Star Fox game I played was Star Fox Adventures on the GameCube, and that was a that was a third person action game rather than a, um, a rather than a flight simulator kind of thing. Hmm. Um, so I'm excited to see them get back to the roots, and that's pretty much what they're doing. This is pretty much Star Fox 64 or Wild Wars reimagined. And um, I can't see why people are negative on that. 
you know, they want to relive this nostalgia feel of Star Fox. Why would people... That's what people people? ask for all the time. Yes. As soon as it happens, it's like, give us something new. (laughs) Yeah, and um, people are... People are bad-mouthing the graphics. Sure, it's not the graphical powerhouse that the Wii U was known for. Oh, it's not known for that anyway, but Nintendo have this kind of edge and style to the games. Yeah. Nintendo have beautiful graphics. Yes. Like you can, I, would, I was tempted to buy... I don't have a Wii U, but I was tempted to buy one just to put on games like Splatoon and Super Mario World just to Mario look Tennis. at... Yeah, Mario Tennis, just yeah. to look at the graphics. Yeah, I still say th- this all the time, that Super Mario 3D World... Is probably one of the best graphical games I've ever seen. Yeah. Because they can do so much with so little in that Mario world. And um, so Star Fox Zero, I think I think it's getting negative press as well because they keep they always keep mentioning the um, the gyro controls with it, and that's not the only way you can play the game. Of course, they would talk about the gyro controls because that's what's un- unique to the game. Why else have they said that you can play it the other way? Though? Yes, they have. They they absolutely have. Okay. Um, so of course I'll give it a try. the the whole The whole thing where the cockpit view is um on your game ha- gamepad and the third person view is on the TV is a real interesting way of playing. And um, people said you have to kind of get your head around that after a little bit, but it just clicks after a while. And again, like you said, you don't have to play with the gyro; you can just play with the sticks. So I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty keen on it. Keen to get back in that world. So yeah. Uh, so what, that's three now? Yep, up to number four. I'm actually pretty excited for Doom. Doom, yeah. yeah and, that's uh, um, that's going to be a big online thing as well, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But And it will still have a pretty solid single player as well, yep. which um, I'm keen to get into as well. Now, um, I talked about this on the grind as well. I had a very sneaky play of Doom when I was at RTX mm. back in January. I was, I'm not really allowed to talk about it, but... But you, you're going to talk about it in two podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I won't say much about it. I'll just say it, it, you know, it lived up to everything I, I'd hoped. It looks, it looks how it plays. You know, it's real, it's real fast-paced. It's non-stop. It's ultra-violent. It's in your face. It's scary at times. And it looks amazing. Um, so it ticked all the boxes for me. And, um, you know, I'm pretty excited for it. It's really hard as well. It's really difficult. So I'm ready to sink my teeth into it. And, um, so graphics are up there with the best of them nowadays? For sure. 2016 standards? Yes, absolutely. Who, who makes Doom? Uh, it's not... Bethesda's publishing it. Yeah. Who makes it? Yeah, I don't want to... I'm not sure. Wh- whoever made it, I want to find out what game they made before this one. Yeah. Because I just want to sort of compare, like... No look at what that looks like but yeah. we don't know so <laughs> we don't know but um yeah I'm pretty keen on it and um the multiplayer looks pretty decent too and it's got like this um you can build your own maps and stuff kind of like in the similar way that um Tunnel Splitters 2 did it built it in uh, that yeah. kind of fashion like room loved, by room block by block mode, yeah. yeah so it loved kind of that. looks like it's going to be built that kind of way build your levels that way with with um triggers and all that and enemy cool so, so that looks pretty cool and um last one I would like to mention you know, I'm going to bring up Ukulele. Um, because, again, this is another game that's really not confirmed for 2016. I think it is. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, October or something. Yeah, it's yeah. confirmed for 2016, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, everything they've been putting out about this game, particularly the music in general, mm-hmm. has been amazing. It's been it's been getting my nostalgia kick in yep. gear. And, um, and we are all about nostalgia here at the 411 <laughs> <Fox>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, like we were saying at the start of the show about Banjo, it's uh, it's been a while since we had a game like this, so yeah, I think the world's ready for something like this game. Or it could just be a massive failure, like um, the Guitar Hero and Rock Band kind of mm. resurgence, or the Tony Hawk resurgence. Yeah, no, yeah. if if they do the game well, it, it'll be good. It's just those games didn't do well just because they weren't built well. You know, yeah. Tony Hawk was just full of bugs, and um, Rock Band just. It rested on its laurels too much. Yeah. It didn't improve. The guitar, guitar Hero was a success. Yeah. It, you know, it changed things up a bit. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's it for that's me. That's your list. Yeah. Good list. Yeah. Um, Cuphead, I don't think I'm going to buy. No? What was your other? Star Fox? Well, I've got, I don't have a Wii U, so I'm not going to buy it. I probably would if I had a Wii U. Mm-hmm. And what was your other two? Doom and uh, Twilight Princess. Doom and Twilight. Yeah, well, Doom, I'd, I'd get Doom. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I, I don't really 
play a lot of online. The only online game I really, online shooter game I really get into is Halo Master Chief Collection, mm -hmm. and I'm really looking for another online game to get into. Um, and I've seen you play Battlefront. Yeah. I really wanted to get that. Um, just haven't had the time. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think Doom's one to look for. Yeah, that I'm going to look forward to. Okay. Um, so my list. Um, I'm going to start off with. Uh, well, I'll start off with my, on my list is ukulele as well. Cool. Um, yeah. It, those days in the late '90s, early 2000s, we had so many of those collectathon games um, from Nintendo, and they were my, my favorite types of games. And just ever since we haven't, there was there's just been this huge gap where we've seen none of those games. They don't do those games anymore. No. I'm just really dying to get one of those games. I've been really hoping for just a, a remake or a re-release of one of those old Nintendo 64 games on the 3DS, mm. but that hasn't happened. Um, so ukulele is one that I'm just hoping for to be really good and just to get me back into those heydays. Actually, can I say something? Yeah. That, um, uh, kind of about six or seven months ago, I recently played a Lego game that I just bought on 360 or something. Because, like you're saying, that collectathon. Yeah. Every now and again, I just want. You, you get these really expensive big games like Fallout. Every now and again, I just want a nice, simple, linear kind of mm -hmm. collecting kind of game that's so simple I could just put on earphones, just zone out, and just just play the game. Yeah. You know, and then. So I, I just you know I just want the style they do it is there's a snow map, there's a desert map, yeah, there's a like a grassy mountain map. Just they just do simple little maps like that. It's just. With good soundtrack, yeah, that's all I want. Yeah. It's just simple, and I think that's why as well. Um, they are really taking it back to those simple days because it is. It's not a full price game. It is a cheaper game. Oh, as is well. it? That's yeah. why it's the same sort of development team from Banjo Kazooie. So I think yeah. they're literally ke keeping it to that scope. I mean, that scope of a game is not going to hold up in 2016. Mm. So that's why I think it's going to be a lot cheaper cool right. and I think it definitely will be out in 2016 because yeah. it's not as big yeah cool. um, next game Dom Bradman Cricket Ugh. 2016 <laughs> is what I think it's going to be called because they released Dom Bradman Cricket 2014 um, I mean you've seen how many hours I've sunk into that game it's pretty ridiculous um, yeah I, I, I walked uh, I went through the entire original Dragon Ball series while playing that game. Because that is a game where you literally you don't have to have the sound on. You can just play it, just have some fun, have things on the ba in the background. Yeah. A lot of the time I listen to podcasts or music in the background. Um, but most of the time I've got a movie or a TV show in the background. But yeah, on the PS3 I played, I watched the entire Dragon Ball series while playing that game. Um, and I can't keep track of how many hours I've played that game on the PS3, but I bought it again for the Xbox One, and I've played well over 100 hours now of that. It's just... A, it, I don't really play it for long periods of time now. It's really just a game where I just turn on for 20 minutes and just uh, just just play, have a bat, have a bowl. Yeah. It's kind um, of like, like your comfort food kind of game. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's just something that I can turn on and have some fun with. Yeah. Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, the next edition of Don Bradman Cricket because uh, that was the first cricket game that they released, True Blue and Big Ant. And um, that was really just a, an, an initial build. Um, they, they just wanted to get the gameplay mechanics out there. The graphics weren't too great, you know that. Mm -hmm. But they were just focused on those gameplay mechanics and they nailed it. So because they've nailed that, those gameplay mechanics... They can now focus on those things like graphics, yeah, and um, and that's what's uh, rumored it to be. Yeah, because it's an Australian studio, so it's it's not a yeah, it's, it's a also, lot smaller yeah. than the scale of something like EA. Yeah, and they those games are really expensive as well. Yeah, they don't go down in price either. So uh, yeah, I'm surprised if they make big sales on those games either. I don't know. I, I'm excited. The, the one of the um, developers from Big Ant or True Blue tweeted on uh, New Year's Day saying 2016 this is paraphrased mm. 2016 a giant leap forward for cricket gaming gaming and cricket or something like that okay so I'm pumped there you go hey they, ha they had enough money to do a sequel and then to even port their 2014 game yeah to, exactly to newer generations so yep. they must be doing pretty well yep and I think this is their puppy just like EA Sports, their puppy is FIFA. Yeah. I mean, they've got other sport games, but you know, FIFA is their big thing. 
True Blue and Big Ant, they've got the Rugby League franchise, but I think Don Bradman, that's their, that's their thing. They're going to turn this into an annual thing. Yeah. That was their original goal when Don, the first Don Bradman came out. They wanted it to be annual. Obviously, um, took a bit longer for this next one, but I think it's, eventually it'll turn into an annual thing. Um, okay, number three is Hitman. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, everything I've seen from Hitman, I'm trying to keep um, away from it watching too much of this. Yeah. I've seen a few trailers and that's it. I don't really want to know anything else. Okay. But um, I, the only Hitman game I've played is Hitman Absolution and it was amazing. Mm. And um, it's hard. I got I, I used the strategy guide for it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just amazing. The little worlds that they, cr- they create, each level is like its own sort of little world. Um, it's not sort of an open world thing, but it's so detailed. Just everything in that world is so detailed that some of my favorite bits of the game is just when you start the level, you're not you're not going around killing anybody yet. You literally just walking through, and you can just look at things and how detailed this world is that they've created, and just walking past people, the conversations that they're having, just studying everything. It's just it's incredible. It's kind of like uh, I I didn't play Absolution, but I've seen footage. It's kind of like in the way you're talking about it. It's kind of like your first observation of the world. It's kind of like working out a puzzle. Yeah, you see, yep. you see your opportunities, and you you kind of work out how to get there, and yep. step by step, you work your way through it to yep. your objective. And these, it's not like, um, it's not like starting, and you've got to go somewhere quickly. Otherwise, you're not going to get that opportunity again. It's one of those things where if a person is going to walk to the window and you need to be there to assassinate him, you know, sniper him down or something, and he walks away from the window, you've missed that opportunity you know he's going to come back. It's like in a big loop. Mm. But this loop is really long. So if you miss that opportunity, you're going to be waiting a while. That's why there's so many other options to assassinate people. But, you know, so you've got that time to sort of go around, explore, and just just look at this world that they've created. And that's why I'm so excited for this new Hitman because it's a next. It's on the next-gen system. Yeah. So it's going to be bigger. And the, th- the thing that keeps confusing me is the way they're releasing this game. Because they're, they're kind of doing a quote-unquote episodically they're, they're not releasing the full game until the end of the year when all the parts of the game have been released I did, I, did, I did not know you didn't know that no. so that's why I've, I've been keeping away from it yes yeah, yeah maybe maybe you research that because they're putting it out part by part so the full game's out by the end of the year like a retail version okay but you can get individual parts of the game digitally digitally yep but so the full game, the on disc, it won't come out until the end of the year. Yeah, and that'll just be a regular retail release. Yeah, you'll obviously pay more per part. Mm. That's how they get you. Um, so maybe wait to. The end. Oh, I think I'll wait till the end. Yeah, because I don't, I don't like playing games. Like just like I, I hate watching. I, I kind of dislike watching TV shows week by week. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to play half uh, a quarter of a game. Yeah. Wait three months. The other quarter, and if it's following a story like Hitman Absolution had a, had a good story. Yeah. If this has a similar story or a similar uh, good story or whatever, yeah. you don't want that to be broken up in that similar fashion. Well, I was going to say I'd probably get the first mission just to try it out and then wait for the release, but then I'm paying for a mission and then the full release, so yeah. now I don't know what to do. I thought the whole thing was coming out, what, next month or month after? No, that's just, the, that's just number one. Okay, the... disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, game number four on my list is Dragon Quest Seven. For the 3DS, yep. which is a re... No, it's just a... A port, a I think. port. It's just been translated and coming out in English. Um, I've never played a Dragon Quest game. Um, neither of you, have you? No. No. But um, I've just heard that these games are huge. Mm. And I really just want to sink my teeth into a huge RPG on the 3DS. Um, that's all I've got to say about it, really. I'm just, I'm just keen for... A, 200 plus hour RPG experience cool so Dragon Quest 7 and 8 I only put 7 because that I'll play that first obviously yeah. they're not coming at the same time are they I don't I don't think so I know I know they're, they're announced for this year yeah so I don't know if they're coming at the same time yeah. or not it's a it's a big year for RPGs on 3DS I don't know if uh, I'm going to step on your toes a bit here but I'm excited for Bravely Second mm. I'm not sure if that was your no. next game no because uh, I recently, same before, I, I just got the demo for the game just to try. I never played Bradley Default. I heard really good things. You recently just finished it. Just finished it. Yeah. Uh, you powered through it pretty much. Yeah, I uh, spent about there was five days in a row where I wasn't working, yeah. 
and I spent about eight hours each day on that. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to get through it. And I can see why, because um, the thing that so far what I've played with the demo, it's a pretty meaty demo. You can sink about 15 to 20 hours in it because wow. there's, a, there's a fair amount of grinding involved. Mm. I'm enjoying it because, like you're saying, I'm, I'm up for a JRPG again. Yeah. Uh, and Xenoblade Chronicles didn't quite get that itch for me. Mm. Uh, I'm definitely going to get back into that, but I'm, I'm looking for something more on the go or on the 3DS. So I think yeah. Brother of Your Second um, might be that for me. I heard also that with the demo that you're playing, mm. um, that data of that demo gets transferred over to the game, the full game. So but, wherever you're up to now, yeah. you'll still continue on that. That's good because that's the biggest thing I was worried about. Like, yeah, so you're, my... not, you're not wasting, you know, twenty hours of your life. Good, okay. <laughs> good. I just, I just really went. I was playing it like I was playing a demo. I just wanted to give it a try. Oh, okay. But now yeah. that you're saying things are going to cross over, I yeah, might sink a bit more time into it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, am I up to my last game? I haven't skipped any, have I? No, just... you should. Yep, I'm up to my last game. Uh, most anticipated game for the year is Mass Effect Andromeda. Really? Yep. Is that coming shock to you? It does, because I knew you were a fan of the series, but not the most. Yeah, I, everything Bioware does, I just eat up. Yeah. The first Bioware game I ever played was Dragon Age Origins, and I was addicted to that. Like, I had a problem. I could not get off <laughs> that. Um, and I, I rarely get that with games, and I love that as well. The, the second time I ever had that was Mass Effect 2. And that was the game where I pulled my first all-nighter on a game. <laughs> Literally stayed up all night through that. Could not get off. And it's something about what Bioware does. It's it's not, you know, just about sort of the missions. It's just the relationships you build. You get just to talk to other people and you get to know them about their lives. And that's just addictive to me. And with Dragon Age Inquisition, how that was just released, they've just gone so much deeper into these people's lives that you can go into that's why I'm so excited what they're going to do with Mass Effect so um, yeah really pumped for Mass Effect Andromeda cool I mean um, I'm not the biggest Mass Effect fan I enjoyed number two the most mm -hmm. I didn't even finish number three I was a bit burnt out because I played them pretty much back to back yeah um, so I was a bit burnt out um, but I did enjoy number two like you were saying the most favourite thing for me was um, building the relationships between yeah. the characters. They had good characters in that game. And um, even though the main character, uh, I disliked him so much. Mm. Apparently, people have been saying if you played the female version of Shepard, it's better. Just the voice acting for me was a bit of a barrier. Yeah. I just can't... Uh, I'd like to relate to a male because I am a male. So, <laughs> it's just... Yeah. It's sexist. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm a male, and this is sort of a role-playing game. Yeah. I'm taking on the role of this male. I don't want to... I don't know. And it is a, you build relationships as in, you you know, you can get a girlfriend in this game or, you know, a partner. Mm. I don't want to go sort of floating with boys in this game. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know, maybe Andromeda might be for me because it's a new uh, trilogy, maybe, I think. Yeah, yeah, they're starting a new... Shepard's not in it. Yeah, so, so maybe that might be my re-entry into yeah. the series. Uh, cool. Taking it back to um, first Mass Effect, though, that was the first get like it was before Dragon Age Origins. I watched recently watched some gameplay of the first Mass Effect, and because it's not as in depth as the newer games that Bioware is doing, it's still I don't know really good just because it's it's really simple. It is simple, yeah, yeah. and it doesn't it's not so in depth. Like Dragon Age Inquisition is just really overwhelming. Mm. I'm like eighty hours into that and. It, probably not even halfway through it and it's it's so overwhelming like it's if you get into it it's good but it, it's just overwhelming with mass effect one you know so it's simple but it's still sort of the same style of game yeah so um I, that's where i found mass effect 2 and dragon age in, uh, dragon age origins they're the bit in, in between mm. so that's where i like it so yeah excited to see what mass effect andromeda does um yeah. I, I really just uh got a little off topic i really dislike games that you say you get in and you can just feel overwhelmed by the amount of content in there. Yeah. Fallout 4, for me, was that. I did enjoy... I did enjoy going out and exploring on my own. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel lost or didn't know what to do. But just the overwhelming... Just this... It, it felt like it... It didn't feel fun yeah. trying to burn through all that content. I uh, think um, one of the ways... That's why this happens is because there's no sort of... They don't give you a sort of a set direction. They ex they encourage you to explore, but 
so early on. You know, you're dropped into this world. Yeah. Go explore this world. Yeah, at least give me some direction. Yeah. I mean, sure, they, they say they point you where to go yeah. as that main mission. But everyone everyone knows the Fallout formula is just to have your own fun. Yeah. Make your own fun with it. So, yeah, and same goes with Witcher, the Witcher 3. I've never played it. I've just heard that that is... Um, that's a that's a pretty time consuming thing. Yeah, it's like a it's like a full time job. I one day plan to get that and try it. I think I'm gonna wait till one day when it's really cheap. Yeah, I'm the same with Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, I'm really interested in that. Yeah, uh, I really want to do that myself. You just got to have a lot of spare time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So that's it. That's it for our most anticipated games of 2016. We're going to move on to uh, the last segment of our show. And this segment is one that we will end with with every show. And this is sort of a, a nostalgic-driven segment. It's called the NOS Shuffle. NOS standing for nostalgia. Um, I have written a list of pretty much every single game that Jake and I have played in our past from in the 90s, decade and the noughties decade so nothing over 2009 Mm -hmm. so um we don't have a proper thing to sort of shuffle this list at the moment so i'm going to give jake the list and he's going to close his eyes and just point to a to a game on the list and what happens is whatever game he points to that's what game we're going to sort of talk about and um you know relive our memories with this game and just sort of talk about the things we used to do with this game all right, so Jake, I'm going to give you the list. So you don't you don't really know which games are on the front or back. So choose front or back. Uh, back, back. I'm okay, back. close your eyes. Okay, just point to a game. That's good. Okay, it's my it's good game. Yeah, this game is Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, cool. Well, I had a really good, I had a really good time with this game, actually. Uh, I remember getting it for Christmas, 2006. I think that's when it came out. Six? It had to, I definitely got it the year it came out. Um, and I was excited because, because Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. You know, we were it's back. back. It's back. Yeah. Which is weird because we never played Banjo-Tooie. No, I never played that. But no. that was because those were in the days when... You know, mum and dad used to get us all our games. Yeah. But they got us Banjo Kazooie, and we never, we, you know, we didn't have internet. We don't, we didn't even know there was a Banjo Tooie, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. We were I, so young. I did try and pick up Banjo Tooie um, on an emulator. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I couldn't get into it. Nuts and bolts, though. Um, it was a big shake up for the series, as you know, it's more vehicular based. Um, create your own vehicles as wacky or as um, compact as you want, and try and burn through these levels. I thought I think it was really clever. And it's not the Banjo Kazooie formula we know. It, it's different. And then but in terms Which is of, why it got a lot of hate. Yeah. But in terms of a vehicle creation combat driven game, it does it really, really well. Mm-hmm. And it's got that Banjo Kazooie rare paint of coat on top of it, which is pretty good. I never played it, but I watched you play it a lot. Because that's when you had your Xbox 360, I had my PlayStation 3. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was good to see Banjo Kazooie in them, like back then when it was modern in mm. 2006, because we haven't seen him since the N64 days, and it was good to see him in those Xbox 360 graphics. Yeah. It was awesome. It was good that the game page homage to that too it was really tongue in, tongue in cheek. Yeah. The game knew he hadn't been around for like 10. 15 years or mm-hmm. something he was fat when you, you when you started yeah playing, but, that's right yeah. something happens and he he, eats, he gets thin again uh, and Kazooie had like a broken wing mm-hmm. or something like that um, so it was it was really clever it was really funny and uh, actually one of my favourite moments from the game besides me beating it I'll get, that to, get to that in a sec but there was this one level called Banjo Land I don't know if you remember ah uh, yeah I do it was, yeah. it was an amalgamation of all classic Banjo yeah. Kazooie and Banjo Tui levels in the one level, like big monuments mm-hmm. or big, um, big... And whenever you went near one of those places, the, the music from that course would play. Yes. So it had all these all the different soundtracks from yeah. Banjo Kazooie. For example, there's the big snowman from Free's Easy Peak in the yeah. middle. Mm-hmm. At the top, it had the graveyard. Uh, had a clanker. The big... Clanker's cabin. Yeah, yeah, had him in the water. 
I don't know. It was really clever the way they did that. And the, yeah, the music was just a kind of a mishmash of these medley of all these songs. It was really clever. Mm. And um, I guess my other favorite moment from the game was actually beating it because uh, the last because boss we, we never got to that stage in Banjo Kazooie. No, <laughs> no, no. So actually beating of the first Banjo Kazooie game was was a good moment, and um, it was a difficult game. The last boss was of course Grunty, and you had to build this pretty much this. Um, all-in-one kind of style of vehicle that could fly, swim, drive, and have enough destructive power to defeat Grunty as well as you're doing all these things at once. It was really difficult, and one of my best moments was creating this all-in-one powerful vehicle to beat it. And I actually recently picked up the game again when re when Rare Replay was announced. Yep. Uh, I picked it up in the 360 again. I don't have that creative spark to me anymore. <laughs> I want things just done for me. I just want to get in there, play with the pre-built stuff, I and do it. I think maybe you're just too impatient these days. I think I definitely I am. <laughs> you don't have the time to be creative anymore. No. <laughs> Which is a shame, because... And in that case, I wish... You know, I know the whole other topic, I, I kind of wish I grew up with Minecraft as a kid. Because then you're, you, you're, just kind of, you're living with this creative edge to you. You're forced yep. to be creative. Whereas, That's what all the kids are talking about now. Yeah. I know, I'm at a school every day and every kid plays Minecraft, whether you're in grade 1 or grade 6, they're all into Minecraft, whether you're a female or male, everyone knows it, everyone's played it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that was um, Benzo, Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts is a good game. I, I think there wouldn't have been um, as much hate as there was for it if they released Nuts and Bolts and uh, Banjo Kazooie game that's sort of in the similar style as Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Mm, yeah. They needed to release something that was um, similar to those games as well as Nuts and Bolts. Nuts and Bolts could have been like a nice spin-off kind of thing, mm. which it kind of was, because it doesn't follow the main series, yep. sort of. Yep. So I, that's why I, I still think they need to release a new Banjo-Kazooie to sort of, you know... Yeah. Well, I mean, the ending was kind of, however philosophical a Banjo-Kazooie ending can be, it left it open for another game. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, one day. Sad to it, see it not on Nintendo, though. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because for sure that would be a Smash Bros. character if oh, it was on Nintendo. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, Microsoft owned it all, but um, it, it, it's not like it, it. Microsoft handled it handled it really well, and it, it would have it wouldn't have been as graphically powerful because it came out during the Wii days. Mm. So it, it looked way better on the 360 yeah. if it didn't come to the Wii. Yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, I think that was a good choice for the first week. It was. We'll cross that off our list. <laughs> We've got a list of about, I think it's just over 100 games, and we're going to do one game every episode just to end our episode. So nuts and bolts, done. Nice. Okay. Um, and that brings us to en the end of our first episode of the 411, folks. Um, can I just actually... Um, we pretty much just came up with the, the title of the show like last night. We we did, yeah. yeah. Well, I did. You did. I sent, yeah. I sent you a list of titles and I knew you would choose this one because it is a <laughs> Simpsons reference. Yeah. Yeah, you, the, the other ones are pretty decent as well, but my eyes just fully gravitated yeah. to the ball. Like, <laughs> no, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, tr I typed it into Google as well just to see if anyone... You know, had this name for anything, but literally all ca all that came up was most is like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks guys for listening to this week's podcast. We will be back next week. Uh, you can find us on iTunes and on YouTube, and we'll see you then. Cool. See you guys. Uh -huh.